After Rebecca, Alfred Hitchcock was a tried and tested director admired by many. Its success was a frustrating time since his final cut never made it to the screen. Producer David Selznick had re-edited the movie behind Mr. Hitchcock's back. This version would go on to win the Academy Award for Best Picture, Selznick's second in consecutive years. After fulfilling his contract with Selznick, Mr. Hitchcock set about making the kinds of movies he wanted to make without the interference from the Hollywood machine. The 1940s was a precursor to his legendary run into the 50s and beyond. He didn't seem to put a foot wrong. Even while prepping Psycho, he knew exactly what he was doing. Now, with all due respect to his Oscar-nominated Spellbound and Lifeboat, this, for me, is where the run really got out of the blocks. His 1948 experimental masterpiece, Rope. I just thought it'd be nice to have supper in here. On this. Isn't it a good idea? Well, it, at least this way no one will try to open it. I don't think you appreciate me, Philip. I'm beginning to, Brandon. When the need to commit the perfect murder is great, the need to act normal around others is greater. But the need for superiority can only exceed so far before the cracks begin to develop and people start to notice. In the opening scenes, John Dole and Farney Granger kill their friend Dick Hogan in a very luscious apartment before a dinner party and stuff him in an antique chest. When the party begins, Family members and friends begin to wonder where he is, not knowing that he is right under their noses. James Stewart is particularly eagle-eyed and sharp-eared, watching the two and recording their reactions to the many conversations, as well as being careful of his own actions and reactions. There's no word of truth in the whole story. I never strangled a chicken in my life. Now look here, Philip. I never I... strangled a chicken and you know it. <laughs> Forgive me, but it just seemed very funny, you two being so intense about an old dead chicken. <laughs> Sorry, we were ridiculous and very rude. I apologize for both of us and the story. Naturally, Stuart and Hitchcock will work together again on Rear Window and Vertigo, my personal favorite. Stuart is at the top of his game in Rope, and with the later movies, they would break the glass ceiling. I recently watched another introduction to Rope, from Movie Drome, which was a Sunday night BBC Two show that celebrated cult movies like Scarface, The Terminator, Walkabout, People Under the Stairs, Halloween. It was initially presented by the director of Sid and Nancy, Alex Cox, then later by the prolific documentarian Mark Cousins. As I stated earlier, this is an experimental movie for which Cox goes into more detail about as it was shot on 1940s 35mm. Each reel of film could contain roughly 10 minutes of footage. While there are some traditional cuts and a lot of rehearsal beforehand, cinematographers Joseph Valentine and William Scal were able to accomplish this by simply moving the camera towards the actor's back. Like Rear Window, this was shot on a soundstage. And whenever you can, pay attention to the skyline, how it changes and blends so well like it's a live shot of the city and not an exceptionally well composited model. Dull and Granger's character appear to be attached at the hip in more ways than one. Down the years, it's been surmised that they could be lovers, but in 1948, the implication is there, but in a subtle way, since it was completely out of the question for the time. Gay characters back then were either seen as something to ridicule or attack. An unfortunate truth that even exists in the more open-minded 21st century. Brandon. Brandon is Rupert. What? He wants to come up. He says he left a cigarette case here. He wants to come up. Well, let him come. But you know he's lying. He's caught on. He didn't leave anything. Up and get back to that phone. I won't. Get back to that phone. Brandon, I can't. You've got to. No, he knows. Shut up. 